In this video, we'll be discussing the high-low method of classifying costs. Remember that a mixed cost, sometimes called a semi-variable cost, is a cost which has both a variable cost component and a fixed cost component. The formula for a mixed cost is as follows. Total mixed costs are equal to variable cost per activity multiplied by the level of activity plus fixed costs. And the graph of a mixed cost shows a line which intercepts the y-axis, which we know is the total cost axis, at a point which is equal to the total fixed costs. We also know that one of management's main functions is planning, which is when management sets future goals for an organization and determines how to achieve those goals. In order to plan appropriately, management has to apply cost behavior analysis to better understand the costs incurred by an organization. Variable and fixed costs do not behave in the same way when the level of activity changes. We know that variable costs change as the level of activity changes. As the level of activity goes up, variable costs go up. And as the level of activity goes down, variable costs go down. Fixed costs do not change as the level of activity goes up or down. Fixed costs always remain the same, of course within the relevant range. In order to perform cost behavior analysis, it's therefore critical that mixed costs, which are a combination of variable and fixed costs, are classified into their variable and fixed components separately. If we already have a mixed cost formula, why can't we just determine the variable and fixed components? because mixed costs are not tracked separately. Instead, mixed cost data is collected at different levels of activity, and then it is analyzed to separate the fixed and variable components. I'm going to describe the high-low method for separating fixed costs. There are other methods, scatter graph method, least squares regression analysis method, but those are topics for another video. In this video, I'm going to discuss only the high-low method. Let's use an example to demonstrate. Phoenix Limited has determined that machine hours is the appropriate cost driver for the company's total utility costs. Remember that this means as machine hours increase, utility costs increase, and as machine hours decrease, utility costs decrease. Phoenix has collected total utility costs and total machine hour usage for the last six months as follows. We've got month, total utility costs, and total machine hours. July, $7,040, 2,160 machine hours. August, $5,920, 1,840 machine hours. September, $6,048, 1,920 machine hours. October, $5,120, 1,600 machine hours. November, $4,900. 1,720 machine hours. December, $6,880, 2,240 machine hours. Calculate the variable and fixed cost components of the utility costs and provide the cost function. It's best to use a step-by-step -step approach to solve problems. Step 1. The high-low method uses the total costs incurred at the high and low levels of activity. The difference in costs between the high and low levels represents the variable cost components. This is because only variable costs change with the level of activity. First, determine the high and low levels of activity. Note that we have to use the activity, the cost driver that causes the cost to change. Once we find the high and low activity levels, we take the related costs. For Phoenix, the activity is the machine hours because as machine hours change, the total utility costs change, which indicates that the number of machine hours drives utility costs. Now, let's determine the high and low levels of activity. If we look at the chart and focus only on the machine hour activity, we can see that the low machine hours is in October, 1,600 machine hours. We also need to take note of the related total utility costs for October, $5,120. We now have the low level and the related mixed costs. Now we can look at the high level of activity, again using machine hours. December is the highest machine hours at 2,240. We also take note of the related total utility costs for December, $6,880.
Now that we have the high and low levels of activity and the related total utility costs, we can apply a formula to determine the variable cost per activity, which here will be the variable cost per machine hour. The formula to determine per activity variable costs is as follows. Variable cost per activity is equal to high cost minus low cost, all divided by high activity minus low activity. Again, Note that when I say high cost and low cost, I mean the costs that relate to the high and low levels of activity, the ones we already determined. So in our chart, the high cost is whatever cost is related to the high activity level. In this case, since the high activity is 2,240 machine hours in December, the high cost is 6,880, the cost which is related to the high activity level. Similarly, the low cost is related to the low activity, which is October with 1,600 machine hours and $5,120 in costs. You can actually see that if we were looking at cost by itself, the highest cost is actually in July, $7,040, and the lowest cost is in November, $4,900. Should we use that as the high cost and the low cost for our formula while choosing totally separate months for the high and low activity, December and October respectfully? In other words, should we choose the high and low for costs separately from the high and low for activity? And the answer is a hard no. I can't emphasize this enough. Never choose the high and low cost separately from the high and low activity. In fact, we never use cost to determine the high and low points at all. We always choose the high and low levels using the activity, which here is machine hours. And then we take the related costs and denote them as a high and low costs, regardless of the costs which are actually the highest and the lowest. This is a bit tricky, and a lot of students choose the high and low activity and then a separate high and low costs. Don't be fooled. You have to choose the high and low activity and then take the related costs, regardless of whether they are actually the highest and the lowest costs in and of themselves. This is critical to remember or you'll end up with an answer which is totally wrong. Now, let's get back to the question and apply our numbers to the formula to determine the variable cost per activity. Remember the formula. Variable cost per activity is equal to the high cost minus the low cost, all divided by the high activity minus the low activity. Variable cost per activity equals high cost of $6,880 minus low cost of $5,120, all divided by the total high activity of 2,240 machine hours minus the low activity of 1,600 machine hours. This equals 1,100 divided by 400 machine hours which equals $2.75 per machine hour. So, for every machine hour the company incurs $2.75 of variable utility costs. Perfect. We've now separated out the variable cost component of the mixed cost. Remember that the formula for the mixed cost is as follows. Total mixed cost equal variable cost per activity multiplied by the level of activity plus fixed costs. We can now replace part of the formula Total mixed cost is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by the machine hours plus fixed cost. However, we're still missing the fixed costs, so let's move on to step two. Using the variable cost per activity, calculate the fixed cost component. We are actually going to use our partially completed formula to calculate the fixed costs. Choosing either the high or low points, which we've already determined, we are going to substitute the total mixed cost and the level of activity into the formula and solve for the unknown, which of course is fixed costs. We can choose to use either the high points information or the low points information. Let's use the high point. Although we actually could choose, I always choose the high point. So that's what we're going to do here. We have a high activity of 2,200 machine hours in December with a related high cost of $6,880. Substituting these amounts into the formula, we get $6,880 is equal to $2.75 
per machine hour multiplied by 2,240 machine hours plus fixed costs. Now let's solve for the unknown number, fixed costs. We can see that $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by 2,240 machine hours equals $6,160. So $6,880 is equal to $6,160 plus fixed costs. We now have to eliminate the $6,160 from the right side of the equation, so we would subtract that amount from both sides. $6,880 minus $6,160 is equal to $6,160 minus $6,160 plus fixed costs. Since $6,160 minus $6,160 is actually equal to zero, and $6,880 minus $6,160 is equal to $720, we now know that fixed costs are $720. We can now use this information to complete the mixed cost formula. Remember, we already have total fixed cost is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by machine hours plus fixed costs. And if we substitute the fixed cost that we just calculated into the formula, total mixed cost is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by machine hours plus $720. This is our mixed cost formula. Management can use this formula to predict costs at different levels of activity. Let's go back again. Could we have used the low level of activity and the related low level of cost to perform step two and calculate the fixed cost? Could we have used low machine hours from October of 1,600 with a total utility cost of 5,120? And the answer is absolutely yes. It doesn't matter if we use the high or the low level of activity to solve for the fixed costs. To show that, let's quickly solve the equation for the low level of activity. $5,120 is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by 1,600 machine hours plus fixed costs. $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by 1,600 machine hour equals $4,400. So, 5,120 is equal to $4,400 plus fixed costs. We have to then eliminate the $4,400 from the right side of the equation, so we would subtract that amount from both sides. $5,120 minus $4,400 is equal to $4,400 minus $4,400 plus fixed costs. And yes, fixed costs are equal to $720. Perfect. It works exactly the same. So our formula for mixed costs is still total mixed cost is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by the machine hours plus $720. The high-low method allows us to separate out the mixed cost into its fixed and variable components, but we have more than that. We have a formula that management can use when planning to determine total costs if there is a change in the level of activity. For example, management might ask what would total cost of utilities be if the total machine hours were 2,000, a totally different level of activity. We could use the formula to predict what the total utility costs would be. Total mixed cost is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by machine hours plus $720. Don't forget, we're going to replace machine hours with 2,000 machine hours. Total mixed cost is equal to $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by 2,000 machine hours plus $720. So $2.75 per machine hour multiplied by 2,000 machine hours equals 5,500. So total mixed cost is equal to 5,500 plus $720 is equal to $6,250. This is a prediction of what the total utility cost will be if the number of machine hours is 2,000. Can we use this formula if we want to predict total utility costs when machine hours are 2,500? And the answer is absolutely not. Why not? Because of the concept of the relevant range. Our high was 2,240 machine hours and our low 1,600 machine hours. We cannot apply this formula outside that relevant range. 
That's because we don't know if the division between the fixed and variable components of the mixed cost will remain the same outside of the relevant range that we already determined. We can use this formula for any level of activity between the high and low levels that we used to calculate the formula in the first place. Now, if we use this formula to predict total mixed costs at different levels of activity within the relevant range, will our predicted total costs equal the actual costs? Most likely not. Because the high-low method only uses two data points, it doesn't produce a precise measurement of the fixed and variable cost components in a mixed cost. The prediction will be a reasonable estimate, well, as long as the cost driver chosen is one that causes cost to change, but it is not a perfect prediction. The formula we derived can be used within the relevant range to make a reasonable prediction. Let's quickly walk through the steps for the high-low method. Step 1. Calculate the variable cost per activity. Determine the high and low levels of activity and use the related high and low costs. Calculate the variable cost per activity using a formula. Step 2. Using the variable cost per activity calculated in Step 1, calculate the fixed cost component. Step 3. Substitute the variable cost per activity and the fixed cost into the formula and use it to predict total costs within the relevant range. That's it for the high-low method. Remember, this may look simple, but it requires practice to master. Thanks so much for watching.